the west coast of the United States is widely recognized as a major hotspot for earthquakes, with California at the forefront of concern. Many experts anticipate the big one to strike the state at some point in the future. However, nestled in the heart of the country lies one of the least understood yet most seismically active regions, the New Madrid Seismic Zone. This hidden threat is poised to unleash a series of devastating earthquakes that could have catastrophic consequences. In today's exploration, we're venturing into the New Madrid Seismic Zone, a region often overlooked when it comes to earthquake preparedness. Despite its quiet facade, this area is destined to shake, rattle, and roll in the future. When that day comes, communities here will face enormous challenges in recovery, as the impacts will be felt far and wide. Beneath the surface of the New Madrid seismic zone lies a hidden but potent threat. Often overshadowed by the seismic notoriety of California, the Pacific Northwest, and Alaska. This region, stretching across Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky, is one of the most dangerous seismic areas in the United States, with the potential to disrupt the lives of millions of Americans. The origins of this seismic hotspot date back approximately 750 million years to the Precambrian era, when the supercontinent Rodinia began to break apart. This massive tectonic event attempted to split the landmass, forming a rift valley. Although the rift ultimately failed to divide the continent, it left behind a significant weakness in the Earth's crust, a geological fault line that still influences the region's seismic activity today. This ancient rift is now buried deep beneath layers of sediment deposited by the Mississippi River. This explains the surprising presence of rolling hills within an otherwise flat landscape. The Mississippi River, a vital lifeline for commerce, agriculture, and transportation, meanders through the heart of the New Madrid seismic zone, carving out a wide, fertile alluvial plain. Historically, this floodplain has supported extensive agriculture, with vast fields of cotton, soybeans, and other crops stretching across its fertile soil. To the west, the landscape transitions into the rugged hills and karst formations of the Ozark Plateau, marked by caves, springs, and sinkholes. To the east, the Appalachian Mountains rise, contrasting starkly with the flat floodplains. These uplands add diversity to the region's physical geography, providing habitats for a variety of ecosystems. The seismic history of the New Madrid Zone has left a lasting imprint on the landscape. Past earthquakes have reshaped rivers, including the mighty Mississippi, formed new lakes, and altered the land through liquefaction and landslides. These events have scarred the terrain, serving as a testament to the region's tumultuous geological past. What makes the New Madrid Seismic Zone particularly enigmatic is that its earthquakes occur within the interior of the North American tectonic plate, far from the plate's edges where such activity is more common. These intraplate earthquakes are still not fully understood by scientists. The seismic zone is not defined by a single fault line, but by a complex network of hidden faults buried beneath the surface, making it difficult to study and predict activity accurately. Despite its seemingly dormant state in recent years, history has proven the destructive potential of this zone. Its earthquakes have altered landscapes, devastated communities, and challenged scientists to unravel its mysteries. Today, the New Madrid Seismic Zone remains a critical area of concern for geologists and emergency planners, who warn that its seismic history is far from over. The New Madrid Seismic Zone lies in a part of the United States where most people wouldn't expect significant earthquake activity. Located in the heart of the country, it straddles the borders of Missouri, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Kentucky. Despite its inland location, millions of people are at risk of experiencing a major earthquake, as history has already shown. The most defining series of earthquakes in the New Madrid Seismic Zone occurred between December 1811 and February 1812. During this period, a sequence of powerful earthquakes, estimated to have magnitudes between 7.0 and 7.5, shook the region. These quakes were felt across an astonishing area of approximately 1 million square miles, an extent unmatched by any other recorded seismic event in North American history. Contemporary accounts from that era describe remarkable phenomena, visible ground waves rippling across the land, rivers temporarily flowing backward, massive fissures opening in the earth, and intense tremors toppling chimneys and trees. 
The town of New Madrid, Missouri, near the epicenter, suffered severe damage, while the surrounding landscape underwent dramatic changes. Entire sections of the Mississippi River shifted course, and new lakes were formed. The unique geology of the New Madrid seismic zone prolonged the seismic unrest. Aftershocks persisted for years, with tremors still being felt as late as 1817, five years after the initial quakes. In the decades following the 1811 to 1812 earthquakes, the region continued to experience notable seismic events, though none matched the magnitude of those early 19th century quakes. Two significant events occurred on January 4, 1843, and October 31, 1895, with estimated magnitudes of 6.0 and 6.6 .6 respectively. The 1895 quake, centered near Charleston, Missouri, caused widespread destruction it damaged nearly every building in Charleston, created sand volcanoes, cracked the Cairo Rail Bridge, and toppled chimneys as far away as St. Louis, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, Gadsden, Alabama, and Evansville, Indiana. Even beyond the New Madrid zone, seismic activity in the broader region has revealed its potential for unexpected earthquakes. A magnitude 5.4 earthquake on November 9, 1968, near Dale, Illinois, caused structural damage in Henderson, Kentucky, and was felt across 23 states. Reports even claim that buildings swayed as far away as Boston, Massachusetts. Scientists and historians have since worked to understand the long-term seismic patterns of the new Madrid seismic zone. Evidence suggests that large earthquakes have occurred roughly every 500 years over the past few millennia. However, there is debate among experts about the likelihood of future major quakes in this region. Despite this uncertainty, the potential consequences of a major earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone remain a critical concern. Unlike the West Coast, where earthquake-resistant infrastructure is common, the central United States is not as well prepared for such events. Since the early 1800s, population density and development in this region have increased dramatically, amplifying the risks posed by a significant seismic event. This lack of preparedness, combined with the historical evidence of powerful earthquakes, underscores the urgent need for enhanced awareness and readiness in the region. Many structures in the central United States are not built to endure the forces unleashed by a major earthquake. One of the most immediate and devastating effects of a significant seismic event in this region would be widespread damage to buildings and infrastructure. Older structures, including homes, schools, and hospitals, are particularly vulnerable to severe damage or even collapse. While modern buildings are generally more resilient, many still lack the latest earthquake-resistant technologies, leaving them susceptible to intense shaking. The damage wouldn't stop at buildings. Critical infrastructure, such as bridges, highways, pipelines, and power lines, would likely sustain severe damage, crippling transportation and communication networks. For example, Interstate 55, a vital artery connecting New Orleans to Chicago, could be rendered unusable for an extended period. The Mississippi River, a lifeline for commerce and trade, would also face disruption. In the earthquakes of the early 1800s, the river's flow was temporarily reversed, and a future quake could cause similar chaos. Even if the river doesn't reverse course, debris and damaged infrastructure would likely obstruct it, making navigation nearly impossible. This would not only hinder emergency response efforts, but also disrupt supply chains, potentially causing shortages of food, water, and medical supplies. The Mississippi River is a critical economic artery, carrying over 500 million tons of freight in 2019 alone, according to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. An earthquake-induced halt to this commerce would ripple through the national economy. Locally, the agricultural sector, integral to the economy of the new Madrid seismic zone, would face significant challenges. Soil liquefaction, a process where water-saturated soil temporarily loses its strength during shaking, could render farmland unusable. Damage to storage facilities, transportation networks, and distribution hubs would disrupt agricultural markets, potentially affecting global food supply chains. The human toll could also be staggering. A 1991 FEMA report estimated that a magnitude 7.6 earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone would kill about 2% of the population, seriously injure up to 10%, cause the collapse of 10% of all buildings, 
and inflict severe structural damage on 30% of structures in the counties closest to the epicenter. A more recent 2004 study based on a magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake projected economic damages of approximately $296 billion, with nearly 730,000 people displaced from their homes. Today, over 2.1 million people live in the New Madrid Seismic Zone, with the Memphis, Tennessee metro area accounting for 1.3 million residents. Other significant population centers include Jonesboro, Arkansas, with 135,000 residents, and Cape Girardeau, Missouri, with 100,000. Additionally, 45 smaller towns and cities with populations over 1,000 would also face significant impacts. However, the effects would not be limited to the immediate region. Major cities such as St. Louis, Missouri, Nashville, Tennessee, and Evansville, Indiana are close enough to experience substantial shaking and damage. In total, the number of people affected by a major earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone would extend far beyond those living directly above its faults. While many residents of the New Madrid seismic zone may not anticipate an earthquake in the near future, despite living in a well-documented seismic area, neighboring Oklahoma presents a stark contrast. Unlike the New Madrid region, Oklahoma has no major fault lines or a long history of seismic activity, yet it has become one of the most earthquake-prone states in recent years. This surge in seismic activity is unprecedented, with Oklahoma experiencing swarms of hundreds of small to moderate earthquakes, a dramatic shift from its historically mild seismic record. Unlike natural seismic hotspots, this increase is linked to human activity, specifically the injection of wastewater into deep wells. This process, a byproduct of oil and natural gas production, has significantly altered the state's seismic landscape. The rise in Oklahoma's earthquakes began around 2009, when the state went from averaging two earthquakes of magnitude 3.0 or greater annually to over 524 in a single year. Most of these quakes have occurred in central and northern Oklahoma, though their effects have been felt far beyond state borders. Several of these quakes have been significant. The most notable was a magnitude 5.8 earthquake near Pawnee, Oklahoma in 2016, the largest in the state's modern history. More recently, in 2023, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake struck near Oklahoma City, the state's largest population center. The damage from these events has included cracked buildings, damaged roads, and disrupted infrastructure. Their reach has been felt as far north as Fargo, North Dakota, and as far south as San Antonio, Texas. Unlike the natural earthquakes of the New Madrid seismic zone, Oklahoma's seismic events are largely attributed to human-induced causes. Research has identified wastewater injection, a common practice in oil and gas extraction, as the primary culprit. This process involves pumping wastewater deep into geological formations, which can increase subsurface pressure and reactivate dormant faults, leading to earthquakes. This explains why earthquakes, once rare in Oklahoma, are now a frequent occurrence. While a major earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone is a matter of when, not if, the likelihood of a large swarm of earthquakes hitting the region in the immediate future appears relatively low. In contrast, Oklahoma's seismic activity continues to present a unique and ongoing challenge fueled by human activities that have fundamentally reshaped the state's geological stability. So, which ticking time bomb poses the greatest threat? The New Madrid Fault, the San Andreas Fault, or the Cascadia Subduction Zone? Determining which fault? The New Madrid Seismic Zone, the San Andreas Fault, or the Cascadia Subduction Zone? Is more dangerous depends on various factors, including the magnitude of potential earthquakes, population density, infrastructure vulnerability, and secondary hazards like tsunamis. Each fault presents unique challenges and threats. The New Madrid Seismic Zone, located in the central United States, poses a significant threat due to its ability to affect an enormous area. The geology of this region allows seismic waves to travel farther than in other parts of the country, meaning a major earthquake could be felt across vast distances. The region is home to over 2.1 million people, including the densely populated areas of Memphis, Tennessee, and St. Louis, Missouri. Historically, the 1811 to 1812 earthquake sequence, with magnitudes ranging from 7.0 to 7.5, caused widespread damage, 
altering the Mississippi River's course and reshaping the landscape. However, the region's infrastructure is largely unprepared for a major seismic event, as many buildings were not designed with earthquakes in mind. Although the likelihood of a significant quake here is relatively low in the short term, the potential for widespread devastation makes it a serious concern. It a seri the San Andreas Fault, running through California, presents a more immediate and frequent threat. It passes through some of the most densely populated areas in the country, including Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Diego. Experts estimate a high probability of a major earthquake, potentially exceeding magnitude 7.8 within the next 30 years. California has invested heavily in earthquake-resistant infrastructure, but the sheer scale of urban development means that even with these precautions, a major quake could cause extensive damage and disrupt global supply chains due to the state's economic significance. Fires, landslides, and widespread infrastructure failure would likely follow, amplifying the disaster's impact. Meanwhile, the Cascadia subduction zone located off the Pacific Northwest coast, represents a different kind of threat. This fault is capable of generating a magnitude 9.0 earthquake accompanied by a massive tsunami. Such an event would devastate coastal communities in Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia, while also impacting major cities like Seattle and Portland. The last major Cascadia earthquake occurred in 1700, and scientists estimate a significant probability of another event within the next 50 years. The region is less prepared than California, with older infrastructure and less comprehensive emergency planning. A Cascadia event would have a dual impact, combining ground shaking and a potentially catastrophic tsunami, making it one of the most dangerous fault lines globally. In assessing these three faults, the San Andreas Fault poses the most immediate and frequent risk due to its activity, population density, and economic implications. However, the Cascadia subduction zone represents the greatest potential for catastrophic loss, given its ability to produce a megaquake and tsunami. The New Madrid seismic zone, while less active, remains a sleeper threat that could cause widespread damage across a vast area in the heart of the United States, especially given the region's lack of preparedness. Ultimately, each fault represents a distinct hazard, and their danger depends on the perspective of timing, impact, and preparedness. In a nutshell, the New Madrid Fault is a silent yet formidable threat lurking in the heart of America. While its earthquakes are rare, their potential for widespread devastation is undeniable. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with others who might want to learn more about this hidden danger. Stay informed, stay prepared, and stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.